Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I am Mike, and today we're talking about our top 10 horror films of 2023. Maybe it's just me, but it feels like there was less like underground, really unknown, really good horror movies. It feels like the a lot in a lot of cases, the right horror movies got their due. Now, that being said, I'm very nervous about putting up this list. Not nervous because I've said some dumb shit before. I'm the guy who thinks that Avatar sucks balls and I hate Inception. And I have very, sometimes just skewed movie opinions. I didn't like Violent Night that much. Been catching shit from my dumbass friends from that for a while now. But... You know, you gotta be yourself. And that's what this list is for me. Before we get into it, I want you guys to know these are my top 10 horror films of 2022. If if you wanted me to make a list of what I thought would be the most popular top 10 list of 2022, I could 23 skadoo you that list really quick. And I feel like people would find it quite impressive. I mean, I could 23 skadoo you a song. I could zippity doo da you a song. But that would be false. It would be wrong. Jack, come on, let's just write a song. I mean, you can't manufacture Inspirato. But that's not what I'm here to do. These are these are my top 10 movies as I see as far as rewatchability, scary moments, you know, charismatic moments, touching moments, whatever. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's what we're going with. I'm going to shut the fuck up now and and get into it. Yeah. Number 10, Deadstream. Did I say it right this time? I'm pretty sure in the actual review, I titled it Deathstream, which is probably the reason it got seven to 12 views. Deadstream's like Evil Dead mixed with Grave Encounters. It is a comedy, horror, found footage film updated for today. This guy, uh, played by Joseph Winter, and he directed it along with his wife, Vanessa Winter, plays this dude who who's this completely obnoxious internet personality who has a YouTube channel, not unlike the one you're watching now. But his is a lot more popular, but he's began to lose a lot of followers because he says dumb shit. And he's kind of an asshole. Not unlike the guy you're watching now. But he decides to spend an entire night in a haunted house and live stream the entire thing, which gives you a really good excuse for a found footage movie to put up cameras in every room and really get the shots that you want. A bunch of shit goes wrong and he pisses off a spirit in the house the same way he does everybody else and it just turns into this like Evil Dead-ish type ride. It's not on the quality of Evil Dead. I mean, what the fuck is, Jim? As soon as you turn it on, the first like two minutes, I was like, I'm hooked. I'm ready to go. It's one of the movies that will depend on whether or not you really like the main character. In this case, I did. I thought Joseph Winters who pretty much Ryan Reynolds buried this thing, led almost the entire film with just his face on camera, holding up at vlog style. But I thought he was charismatic. And speaking of Ryan Reynolds, he kind of reminded me of a little bit of Ryan Reynolds. But I thought he was charismatic. I thought he was funny. Yes, the character's a douchebag, but he could still be funny and entertaining the way he does it. It's a, it's a nice, short, quick-to-the-point, dumb, funny, gory, entertaining indie horror movie, and I absolutely recommend you guys checking it out. So that's my number 10. My number nine is gonna be, it's The Menu. The Menu came out wide in theaters, but it's weird. I saw trailers for it over and over and over again, but it doesn't ever feel like anybody was really talking about it in the horror community or anything. I'm not sure why that is, but the movie came out, revolves around R Ralph Fiennes, Fiennes? Vienna Sausages, I can never get how to say his name right, but I thought it was an Oscar-worthy performance from him. I thought it sold the whole thing. He's this really jaded, completely intense and obsessed fucking chef who runs this restaurant that just attracts the most douchey, rich type of haha <laughs> asshole that you can imagine in your life and he snaps but he snaps in a very planned way and he runs this completely obsessed kitchen on this island away from everybody and everything which is the perfect environment for a horror movie and he invites all these rich people out there to teach them a lesson and it's led by an amazing cast from Anna Taylor Joy to Nicholas Holt to Ralph Fiennes as we mentioned John Leguizamo's in this and he's really good in this better than this than he was in Violent Night where he just played like a standard ass bad guy and I just thought it was it was intense it was hilarious you couldn't wait to see what they were going to pull out next they did this really cool kind of Scott Pilgrim thing where every time he would unveil a new course and things would as the night went on get more and more fuck do the menu would pop up on the screen and you'd see what it was and just I thought it was a really cool I thought it was an original idea they kind of at the very end they dropped the ball a little bit with the story nothing too egregious it just felt too easy but apart from that really intense scenes really amazing performances some good jokes in there as well and uh, a pretty fabulous would be one of the top five kill scenes of the year and if you've seen it you know what I'm talking about s'more 
That's all I have to say. Number eight, and this is another one that was a wide release in theaters. As I said before, Smile. Smile came out and it depends. I mean, I either hear people say, man, Smile fucked me up. Or there's people who are like, Smile was a rip off of It Follows or The Ring or something like that. And both I think are right. I think Smile knows exactly what it is and it does a great job at being what it is. It's the perfect movie that's marketed the perfect way to go to theaters and be a Friday night teen audience and everybody else audience. Try to get that conjuring crowd and stuff like that out there. It's It seems like a, it, it's going to go one of two ways. It's either going to be like a Blumhouse kind of cheap sort of lazy truth or dare type of movie. Or it's going to be something like The Ring and it's actually going to be super sinister and kind of fuck with you a little bit. And I'm happy to report that in my opinion it ended up more like The Ring. Which to me... The first time I saw it in theaters, one of the scariest movies I've ever seen in the theater for the first time. Did not expect to walk into that holy fucking shit show that was The Ring. Scared the goddamn daylights out of me. Now, the Smile wasn't as good as The Ring, and it does rip off a lot of elements from it. Rip off, maybe a strong word, probably. But I thought what the, what the movie does, the way it handles anxiety, which is really at the root of the entire movie... I thought they did a great job of that. Yes, how everything unfurls, how they discover it, how they do, you know, everybody in every horror movie has to go to the library and Google it, and they're like, oh my God, I figured it out. The kind of horror tropes are there, sure, for this type of, like I said, Friday night roller coaster movie, but the special effects were amazing. That end scene with the ha was fucking nutty, and I, it was way more disturbing than I thought it was gonna be with like the throat cuts, the cat in the box. It's my cat in the box. My dead cat in a box, baby. <laughs> Way more mean and disturbing than I expected it to be with some really great holy shit moments in it. Okay, now here's where we get to the point where I probably start to piss people off. Um, <laughs> my number seven, that's right, right? 10, 9, 8, yeah. My number seven horror movie of 2022 is going to be the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 reboot, and I am not ashamed of it, man. Look, the people who hate this movie fucking hate this movie, and I think people were confused by this movie. Because when it came out with the trailers, there's already that, oh my god, another Texas Chainsaw Massacre, can we please do something original, yada, yada, yada. There was this whole crazy thing about how they had to fire the director and basically shit can all the stuff that they filmed because it was so bad. The film was produced by Fede Alvarez, and they brought in a new director, did a whole new thing. I think a lot of people thought this was going to be a shit show from Texas Town. And then the next thing you know, there's all these murmurs from test screenings of, oh my god, it's super awful, horrible, woke, and I, let's not get into what all that shit means. But I think people were confused by it, because when the movie came out, it wasn't on the side of its characters. They had some of those annoying, over-the-top characters that really were judging books by their covers in this, and they were the movie was against that kind of pre-packaging of other human beings and their ideals and there's other people that hate it because they just hate the idea of someone being like hey Leatherface you're gonna be canceled but look what happened to that guy he got fucking chainsawed up his taint through his brain and then Leatherface pretty much stuck a chainsaw inside of everyone he'd met within the past 27 minutes it's the only Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie with an actual massacre in it and look there is stuff bad about it the Sally Hardesty thing was fumbled like a motherfucker you just cut that whole story out of the film and you change it up maybe a character or two here and really focus it on Leatherface and what's going on with this and I think you've got a way even better movie but the kills were awesome they were mean as shit we gotta give it up to the dude who played Leatherface nobody ever talks about about it but Mark Burnham who played Leatherface in this movie fucking killed it he was awesome and had some amazing kills in it from the eh to the to the bus slaughter you know what I'm talking about when the eh and then the oh uh, the fight scene with Richter with the fucking leg ooey gooeys and all that stuff I mean just it's got for me almost everything you want in a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie oh look honey we're about to piss people off even worse number six is gonna be Halloween Ends yep lost a lot of you just now look I, I have Literally no reason to say this if I just didn't mean it, but I like the movie. I 100% understand why so many people hated it. They marketed one thing to us with the final battle between Lori and Michael. And then they, they gave us a fucking romance for the first half of the movie. Here's the thing. I just happen to like weird shit like that. I, I love the score to it. I, I like the character of Corey Cunningham. I, I love that Andy Matichak got to shine a little bit and they showed how just fucked up she is. And I, there was just a lot of the stuff as a standalone movie that I really enjoyed. And I thought the kills and Michael were filmed extremely well in this movie. And the cinematography was great and the score was fucking awesome. There was just so many things. This was a really well-made movie. 
if you take your brain out of the idea that it's a Halloween movie. I do understand why Halloween fans are upset. It's just to me as a standalone, I've seen so many Halloween movies. I was all right with him going and doing some avant-garde shit here. I really was. Is it perfect? Fuck no. I would have done a thousand things differently. Give me three more scenes of Michael killing people like that were in the fucking novel. And I feel like people are way more happier with the final product that they got. I'm, I'm mad too because it was very easy for them to fix the problems with this movie and make it not only a good film, but also a good trilogy capper and a good finale and a good what you promised. Uh, I love it for what it is and I also dislike it and I also hate parts of it for what it's not. I, I understand both sides of it. I just, as a standalone movie, I thought it was a, a well-made film. Smack my ass and call me Susie. It's how I feel. And for those of you who are still left, my number five movie of the year is going to be, it's going to be Pearl, the sequel to X. I thought this movie, I went in to see it and I liked X. I really did. I didn't enjoy it quite as much as everybody else did, but it was a fun slasher movie. I enjoyed it for what it was. Pearl took me by storm because of the performance of Mia Goth. This was a shining type of, I'm not obviously not the shining level. If the shining came out this year, it'd be fucking number one on this list, but still a great movie, man. Just the, the, it also reminds me of Joaquin Phoenix in The Joker a little bit, how this this personality just oozed out of her in this demented, fucked up way until she becomes this fucking scary ass girl that that you have nightmares matching up with on Tinder. Not not that I would know. I'm I'm old as fucking married. I I, I don't have a Tinder. I never have. Grinder, yes. No, I'm kidding. Oh, okay, I get it. You're not my demographic, so I'm not insulted. Not really. Who's your demographic? Do you love pussy? I do. Then not you. But my point is this. Uh, she is definitely the kind of girl that you did not want to start dating. Either back in the 1800s when I was single or today. Uh, she just... Mia Goth just took this character and just ran with it, man. From the beginning of the movie and the, everything that happens as you watch her psyche break down up until the very last shot of the scene, which really just fucking nailed it and sent it home for me, where she's smiling and just holding that fucking... <laughs> While she's crying and the, and the credits are going up, you're just so disturbed by it. You're like, what the fuck? The pinnacle of this movie was... the scene. Maybe spoiler alert here, fast forward like one minute if you haven't seen it. But there's... I'll just... Probably not a spoiler. I mean, I'll just say that there's a death scene that happens and it's there's a lot of dialogue, maybe a little bit too much even, but a lot of uncomfortable dialogue that leans up to it. And when the girl's walking down the driveway and then she comes out and picks up the ax and just like slowly walks toward her, that was some of the best cinema horror of the year. I mean, the way that that scene played out, it felt old school as shit. It felt just really just gross up in your Ganges you knew it was going to happen and you just couldn't escape it and they just played it out slow so slowly the dread it was done so well what a fucking acting performance by her and you know you got to give an extra point to any movie where someone fucks a scarecrow dry and with number four we'll go right back to pissing people off again I just it's one of those movies man I get it like I loved it more than <laughs> almost anybody did and that's going to be Beast with Idris Elba this movie, I, I went to the theater, I sat down to watch it, and I thought to myself, all right, here we go, a generic fucking, why am I here? What am I doing this to myself for? This is going to suck. And from the second it started, maybe it was that attitude going in, but this movie was a fucking ride, man. And not just viscerally, but emotionally too, where I just Elba takes his two girls uh, out into the, the middle of, of the fucking safari, you know, and these, these lions attack, super lions attack. And there's this whole thing where he has this broken relationship with one of his daughters. And I thought that was really well done. And we've seen it done in movies before, but I just thought the here, the connection, the acting between the two was really good. And Charlotte Copley was really great in this movie as just like an earnest best friend. I, I thought the characters were really done well. And on top of that, I thought the scenes with the lion were super fucking intense. Was it something we hadn't seen before? No, but I just thought it was really well edited. I thought it was really well shot. I thought that the CGI work that was done on the line was done really well. You, you could rarely tell that it was CGI. Like you knew, the brain always knows and that sucks. But this is way better than most moments. Like it's way better than what you saw with the CGI, with the animals and something like Prey. This felt like they did an amazing job with the CGI here and you have to commend it. But yeah, man, I just thought the scenes were intense. I really loved the characters. I was, it was just, it felt like an old school nineties thriller that you just don't get anymore, but really, really well done. Number three, and we're getting closer now. My number three horror film of the year is going to be Barbarian directed by Zach Krager, starring Georgina Campbell, Bill Skarsgård, Justin Long. 
This movie fucking ruled, man. And it was the beautiful kind of movie that you just go into. They did such a good job marketing it, not telling you shit. They knew that the only way to have this film really succeed was to have you go in not knowing what it was about. And it was some of the best marketing I've seen done in a horror movie this year. And I, I'm one that truly believes that marketing makes horror movies better. Think about the Blair Witch and things like that. Like the fear of going in for the first time into the unknown and what you expect, what you don't know is in the darkness. All that stuff really adds to a movie experience. I thought the, the first act starts slow, but the conversation, the acting so good. There's a whole, what would you do in this scenario? What would you do if you were him in this scenario? What would you do with her in this scenario? And I won't talk about any details about it just in case you haven't seen it. And then act two, you bring in Justin Long, who's just chewing the fuck out of the scenery, being hilarious. He knows that right when they start to give you a taste of the horror, they have to jump back to this second act where you're giving us a brand new character and he and they know that he has to be really entertaining for you not to check out. You worked so hard to get to that and now they're still pulling it back. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in and he nails it. They nailed the script on that part. I loved his character. I loved all that stuff. I love how batshit it got. They really do pay off your patience by going just fucking to the moon with the crazy shit. And yeah, there's tiny little plot holes here. How is this person this person? You know what I mean? Why are those things so dangly? And also, <laughs> how does this thing survive? Things like that. Little tiny things. I get qualms here and there with the script, but I just love how mysterious it was. I love how clean the fucking camera work was. I love the cinematography of the movie. I love the characters. Barbarian fucking ruled, man. It's exactly what I love about horror movies. Sitting down in a theater, not knowing what to expect and having your face melted off. Speaking of faces melting off, my number two horror movie of 2022, very close to being my number one, is going to be Terrifier 2. Holy shit. This is one of the greatest, in comparison to the original, one of the greatest horror sequels of all time. As far as a jump up from the original. I liked the original for, I thought it was, it had gold in it. I thought it was this... Not perfect movie by any means, but it had little nuggets of horror gold in there, like the fucking Vagis split. This movie came out, and it was the dark night to Terrifier's Batman Begins. Who would have thought that a Terrifier movie was going to come out, look this good, have this much action in it, have this this much, well, we knew it was going to have this much gore in it, but just have the this good of acting performances in it, be this long, yet still so entertaining? Does it drag on a couple points here, there? Yeah, sure. But it, uh, it somehow ups the gore in the grittiness that we got in the first movie and adds everything that you want in a good movie from the character actors being interesting to you caring about the plot to you caring about the characters starting with Lauren Levera's character who was just the final girl of the year probably I mean a, a new scream queen to add to an already legendary group she fucking ruled in this man I like the mom character I like the brother character I thought just even the annoying best friends I thought were good and look what we, how much I've said about Terrifier 2 without really going into the gore. Just what a fucking experience this was to watch with an audience freaking out, screaming. I didn't see anybody puke or pass out, but allegedly that did happen in places very close to my favorite horror movie of the year. Again, if I wanted to make a list that I thought everybody would like the most, I could have made that list. This is how I fucking feel, man. My number one movie is going to be Scream 2022. Scream and Halloween are my two favorite movie franchises of all time. Scream is my favorite horror movie of all time, and it, you, you can make an argument that's my favorite movie that's ever existed. When Radio Silence came out with this movie, and I went to see it, and they had nods to all the things, and not just in a nostalgia way. Scream, Scream is a little bit different, where it's not just like, it's not only one-liners and throwbacks and things like that. Just little moments that you wouldn't notice if you weren't paying attention, but that just meant a lot to me as a Scream fan. Like when the cam when the, we, we jump to a new scene and a new song from the soundtrack's playing and the camera pans down, just certain cuts, certain camera movements, certain just things that Wes Craven would do in his films that Radio Silence managed to nail. And not just the, the generic stuff, but just little tiny nuanced things. And yeah, I know that people were a little bit upset because they felt like the reveal and things were very, you know, vanilla, very just not satisfying. I thought they were going to do something crazy with it as well. But what this turned out to be was a very Force Awakens type situation where the first movie they did, they really wanted to put their feet in the ground of this universe that Wes Craven and Kevin Williamson built and really established themselves first before they started to play around with things a little bit. 
And I thought they just nailed that. I thought it was just such a well-oiled, clean, well-done fucking movie, man. And I thought that they casted it well, and I thought that the soundtrack was good, and I thought the cinematography was good, and the camera movements. I thought the gore was good, the fucking neck dick dangler scene uh, with the, the 13 Reasons Why dude, Dylan Minnette. Uh, I really like the cast that they brought in. And of course, you know, the one thing that just really sticks a fist in my ass is that they, you know, obviously they killed Dewey. And I don't know, you like what you like. I don't enjoy fists in my ass. And I did not enjoy Dewey dying. Um, I just, that broke my fucking heart. I hated that. And and this, I always bring this up to say like, I hate that they fucking did that. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I always say wrong kid died. Should have been Gale. But I don't hold it against the movie. You know, it was it was a decision the movie made. It doesn't make the movie better or worse itself. I hate it for what it means for the future of the franchise. Not necessarily. It probably made this movie better to have that scene, that scene that was so impactful in it. For me, it makes me worry about the rest of the franchise because I feel like David Arquette's character as Dewey was more important than some other characters that they could have killed off in that moment um, going forward. But we'll see what happens. I still think Scream 6 is going to rule. That being said, as much as I hated that movie, I just, man, I I find it to be the most rewatchable movie for me of the year. Maybe it's just my love for the Scream franchise, but I've watched this movie like 10 times already. I I love the violence. I love the ghost face. I love the one-liners. Holy shit, it's ghost face. I love that it ends up back at Stu's house. Just enough nostalgia for me. You know, I thought Halloween Kills tried too hard to throw nostalgia in there. I thought Scream 2022 nailed it. I thought they did just enough to really put us back in that world without ever feeling like they were just kind of being corny about it. Was it perfect? No. I mean, it's still, it was, it was an 8.5 for me overall. I thought Amber being one of the killers was a little bit far-fetched. Like I said, I hated the Dewey thing, but I thought the character that they gave Dewey in this was fucking awesome. I thought he was amazing. That scene where he's walking back down the hallway was just so badass. The last conversations between him and Gail I thought were awesome. I, I can go on and on about this movie, but look, I just, I love it. I thought it was a well-oiled, really great callback to the Scream franchise, and it was the perfect movie to really reestablish this universe, get things going. It, it had all the things. Was it as good as the original Scream? No. It's probably my third favorite Scream behind the original and, and, and Scream 2, which is saying a lot, though. But it has all the same things you love about a Scream movie. And it. it's got likable characters. It's got surprising deaths. It's got good death scenes. It's got meanness to it. It's got meta-ness to it. It just, it had everything I love about a Scream movie. And that's why it's my number one movie of what I thought was a pretty fucking great year for horror. How did you guys feel about this year horror? Comment down below. And just real quick, some, some ones that almost made the cut. And I mean, really close almost made the cut the black phone probably would have been my number 11 almost was my number 10 you know i thought it was a good movie i just thought that it was one of those movies that the trailer really did ruin for me not not so much as what's going to happen but the the real pool of that movie apart from scott derrickson and the cinematography and things like that was ethan hawk's performance as the grabber and they really gave away all of the best of that in the trailer and, and I, I just really wasn't a fan of like the the kids the ghost kids teaching him to fight and all that just some of that took me out but it's still yet yeah, a very seven-ish feeling movie. Ethan Hawke's performance was amazing. It was scary as shit when he was sitting there with his shirt off holding the belt. It had its moments. I thought it was disappointing for what I thought it was going to be, but I still thought it was a good movie. Uh, also, X, as I mentioned, I liked that a lot. I liked the Hellraiser reboot. I thought there were some really nice things in that that they did well. Uh, nope, I thought was a really good movie. I thought it was very, very much overrated in my opinion compared to what people were saying about it. I thought it had a lot of problems, but overall... It has some great moments in it. The sadness was, oh God, it was just so fucking mean. This is a zombie movie that is just, I mean, it'll put a dick in your eye socket. It's between this and Terrifier for what's actually gorier. I don't know. I think probably Terrifier is probably gorier, but this had some fucking holy shit raviolis in it. And then also Orphan First Kill. I thought that was a fun little movie to watch. I liked a lot more horror movies in 2023, but those are the ones that I got closest to making the list. Uh, what did I miss in your opinion here, guys? What was your favorite? What's your top 10 of the year? Top five if you didn't see that movie, whatever. Just please understand that this is just my list. I'm not telling you these are the 10 greatest horror films of 2023. I want to hear you tell me what you think they are. These are just my favorite favorite top 10 horror films of 2023 thank you guys so much for watching make sure you subscribe and click the bell because we got a lot more in the year starting next year stuff our most anticipated live streams top 10 overall movies uh, top 10 horror performances of the year all sorts of stuff so make sure you please click subscribe and the bell thank you guys for taking the time to watch this with me today i love your fucking faces i hope you guys have an amazing day Halloween never ends, suck my fucking dick, and I don't really care what Blumhouse fucking says. Put him in a box, or suck a fucking cock. You can say he's dead, but we all know he's not. Yeah. 
So let's go trick or treating. Let's go fucking drinking. Let's all go in pumpkin head on VHS. Cause Halloween.